Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a very quick market update for last month and let you know where we're at from a numbers perspective. I'm gonna to talk to both buyers and sellers and let you know what you should be contemplating and thinking about if you're considering entering the market. And then lastly, I'm gonna talk about a couple of controversial proposals put forth by the NDP's David Eby, the housing minister, in advance of the municipal election that's upcoming this quarter. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Hassan. I'm a real estate agent here in Vancouver. I make these educational videos to help you in your buying or selling journey. Without wasting any time, let's get started. So when we look at the real estate market from a numbers perspective, I think none of us will be surprised to know that sales are down year over year for both Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. In previous months, the sales were down more significantly in the Fraser Valley than in Metro Vancouver, and this is talking from a sales quantity perspective, but last month in September, uh, things were a lot closer together. They were both down around 50%. I think it was 40% in Metro Vancouver and about 50% in, just over 50% in the Fraser Valley. Uh, prices on a month over month basis, uh, down in the low single digits for all product types in both regions. So that's anywhere from 1.5 uh, to about three and a half percent depending on what type of product. Uh, for certain types of inventory or real estate out there, uh, off of February's peak pricing, some areas and some products are down 20, 30 percent. Uh, whereas other products, I would say, for example, uh, condos have been less affected by any sort of pricing changes. There are some areas that um, are actually still headed in an upwards direction, for example, uh, Brentwood in Burnaby uh, is still considered to be a hot market. So it really depends on the product type in terms of where we are at uh, when we're looking at real estate numbers. Now from an inventory perspective, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, the Fraser Valley year over year has 50% more inventory uh, than it did last year. And Metro Vancouver, uh, just a little bit more, 8% than it did last year. Here's the thing though, while inventory is quote unquote piling up in the Fraser Valley, we're still well off what we normally have, typically have for inventory available uh, for sale. And to give you a bit of a perspective here, when we look at the last 10 years of inventory in both Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley, we have about two thirds to 50% of the inventory available for sale that we did 10 years ago. And in that time, sale prices of real estate have doubled. So what we can garner from that, and I'm not, math was not my strong suit in high school, but I can put this simple math together, is the value of real estate obviously is driven by the supply, how much quantity we have available for purchase. And when we see the historic trend, 10 years is a long time, we can of course call it a trend. When we see the trend of lower inventory year over year, what does that tell us about real estate prices on a move forward basis? So. One of the things that you may find interesting about today's market is that even though it's slower, even though sales quantity is lower, and in fact, month over month prices are coming down in many areas, we're still seeing multiple offers in the market. And I know that can be tough to wrap your head around or to fathom, but the multiple offers of today are very different than the multiple offers that we had a year ago in the sense that homes are not selling for 100,000, 200,000 above asking price multiple offers are selling and a lot of them are still selling in and around the asking price. So what that tells you is you have a group of buyers that are hunting for deals. They're all shopping for deals in the market and that makes a lot of sense because when markets quote unquote slow down, that's the time to take the opportunity to try and get a deal on a property. So from a seller perspective, what this tells you is your home, if it's priced right and if it's presented right, it will sell and it will sell at favorable terms. Now, this is not the type of market where you can work with an agent who just throws your listing on the MLS and hopes it sells. It's not the market where you wanna hire your nephew who just got his real estate license to sell your property. It's, it's still a challenging market to sell your home. Uh, so you need to work with someone who gets exposure outside of the regular MLS channels. Now, if you are a buyer in this market, Human nature may tell you that you should just wait and see what happens. And for a lot of buyers, that makes a lot of sense right now. But having said that, 
Now is also the time where there is greater opportunity for a buyer and less of a situation uh, where you're having to compete. Now I know I just mentioned that there are multiple offers happening on properties, but again, they're not selling at skyrocket prices. A lot of these buyers that are going into multiple offer situations, they're, they're shooting low ball offers out there and as they should. But if you're someone who is buying for a principal residence, I think the number one question outside of can I afford this, the number one question you should ask yourself is what is my time horizon? I think when we hear headlines, we, we hear about the real estate market and it's doing this, it's doing that, we tend to narrow our focus and we stop looking at the big picture. And real estate is a big picture purchase. It's a generational purchase for many of us. We plan to buy real estate and it's a one-way ticket. We're not looking at an end date for most of us for when we're going to dispose of that real estate. We want to buy it. We want to live in it. We want to create memories in it. We want to hold it. We may even want to pass that down to future generations. For someone in that scenario that has stability in their career, uh, is able to afford the payments, and remember, we are stress tested here in Canada to make sure you're able to afford it if interest rates do increase, mortgage rates increase further. So we have that protection for you. If that's your scenario, uh, this may be an opportune time uh, for you to get into the market. Now, as mentioned, there's a municipal election coming up. I want to quickly talk about two proposals being put forth by the NDP, uh, David Eby, who's the housing minister. Uh, he has come out with a uh, uh, comprehensive housing policy. I can't cover everything here, but I'm going to talk about the two most significant proposals that are getting a lot of the media coverage. Number one is an anti-flipping tax, and essentially what this is is suggesting that anyone that purchases real estate outside of some select exemptions, if they are to sell that piece of real estate within two years, they'll be subject to a sliding tax depending on how long they held the property for, we don't know the tax amount. We do know that some of the exemptions will be in issues of divorce, uh, losing employment. Those are a couple of the exemptions. Um, my opinion on this tax, and, and let's say taxation in general in real estate, is it's never solved the problem. It's never helped. You can look at all the taxes that have come in, the foreign buyer tax, the spec and vacancy tax. It hasn't done anything for the price of real estate. And like we talked about at the beginning of this video, it comes down to supply and demand. Where I take some issue with this tax, so it, I'm in agreement where I don't like to see speculators buy real estate, hold on to it for two or three months, don't even move into the property, they sell it immediately after in a hot market and sometimes they'll sell it for 150, 200 grand more. They will ride the wave upwards. I agree that this market, there's no place for that in this market. I don't feel like an anti-flipping tax is the right way to get there. My concern is that whenever you have exemptions to a tax, you're never able to actually cover every exemption. Think of all of the life changes that could happen to someone. A bona fide purchaser comes in, buys a piece of real estate, things change for them. They're forced to sell in six months or a year. They should not have to be subject to another tax. So the anti-flipping tax, there are supporters, there are people that are not in support of it. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. I think there are some significant holes in it uh, and I personally don't support it. I don't think that this is gonna have the desired outcome uh, that the province is looking for. The second thing I wanna mention, this is the last one I'm gonna talk about in terms of the housing platform, but I will uh, link to it below in the description. So if you wanna see all of the details, uh, but the second proposal I want to talk about is uh, David Eby's plan to remove rental restrictions uh, from condos. So uh, most buildings, newer buildings, I believe after 2005, do not have rental restrictions outside of you know short-term Airbnb style uh, restrictions. But um, what David Eby is suggesting is that for buildings that have rental restrictions right now, removing the Strata Corporation's rights to restrict those rentals. I like this in principle uh, because seemingly overnight it would add a bunch of rental units to the market. Now, 
One of the things is with rental restricted properties is they tend to be good buys for first time buyers that are looking for value that obviously they have a tight budget to work with as these homes uh, carry a lower price tag than an identical unit that doesn't have these restrictions. So they are great opportunities for first time buyers to get into the market. So removing these rental restrictions uh, essentially makes it tougher on that first time buyer to enter the market. So while it does add rental pool, I don't think it does anything for affordability. In fact, I think it makes uh, housing more unaffordable because that entry level bar uh, gets, raised, gets raised higher. So those are the two uh, core components, I guess you could say, uh, about the housing plan. There are some additional uh, elements as well, which again, I'm going to link below. So guys, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did and you got some value, if you could do me a huge favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel, what that does is it sends the video to more people so they could learn as well. If you're in the Vancouver area or Fraser Valley area and you need real estate help, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to help you out. All my contact info is in the description box below. But outside of that, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.